Dragon Ball Super Superhero has finally been announced as the official name for the movie that, as of now, is planned to be released sometime in 2022 and I know you guys, as well as myself, just honestly can't wait any longer. As I mentioned in the comments of the previous video, even with little to no information on the movie right now, as time goes on and more and more details are released, entities like Super Dragon Ball Heroes are sure to incorporate at least relative ideas coming our way. To be completely honest though, I am even more excited about how the homies Jordan and Monty are going to put their own spin on things in the coming months as their own manga Dragon Ball Super Sadala story develops. When we last left off in Dragon Ball Super Sadala, Vegeta was busy at work training his favorite pupil in the rest of the Saiyans of Universe 6. Showing off his new God of Destruction powers and resembling Beerus more than he probably realizes at this point, Vegeta put the Saiyans in the ultimate survival situation by threatening to destroy them as well as the planet could they not stop his next attack. Kaba, due to the power of countless pure-hearted Saiyans pouring into him, was able to ascend to the level of Super Saiyan God. After Vegeta's attack ceases and the Saiyans relish in what they feel is a victory against Vegeta, this is when Kale and Kalifla show up amongst the massive explosion that took place, wondering what the defense force is getting into. When they arrive, not only are they surprised to see Kaba's new powered up form, but they aren't too welcoming to Vegeta either. Kalifla's arrogance ends her up in a match against Vegeta as she wants to show off her powers as well, but this time she seems to have gotten into a bit more than she can handle. Kalifla's attitude and mentality of being stronger than the rest of the Saiyans is one of the biggest barriers stunning her growth as Vegeta brings her down a few pegs as well. Even her new Super Saiyan 3 transformation proves to be less than useful against one who wields the power of destruction. After being soundly defeated by Vegeta, Kel and Kalifla take their leave, now more determined than ever to become stronger so they will always be able to protect one another no matter what. As Vegeta and Kaba return to their business, even though Kaba may have taken the first step into godhood, he still has quite a long way to go to even control this new power of his and Vegeta knows this. However, it would seem time is now of the essence as King Sadala makes his move in the most recent chapter. Headed to the planet of the Gardenians to set up a stronghold against the imminent Tuffle invasion, King Sadala and his guards have arrived, but the Tuffle plan seems to be already well underway. First off, I want to give a huge shout out to Jordan and Monty for all of the work these guys do, and I would honestly consider them both good friends of mine at this point, so if you guys want to check out Dragon Ball Super Sadala or any of their past work, or you're just looking forward to what they do in the future, be sure to follow these guys on Twitter. I'll have them linked down below in the description box for you guys. If you haven't already, be sure you have those notifications turned on by clicking the bell icon down below to never miss an upload as soon as they go live. And if you haven't already guys, consider leaving a like on this video as well. It really helps out a ton. Don't forget to follow on both Twitch and Twitter to stay up with me and all Dragon Ball and anime related content. But without further ado, In our most recent chapter of Dragon Ball Super Sadala, we're taken to planet Gardenia for the first time and introduced to the grandfather of one of our new characters. Grandfather, I've come to check on you, a young man says, as we then find out his name is Tarragon. Good to see you, he says, as they take their seat at a nearby table. He notices that something seems to be troubling his grandson, though. Tarragon tells him that he keeps having this repetitive dream where aliens conquer their planet. Well, his grandfather tells him, that could be because of our past. We were once at war with a race called the Tektekians. They wanted to harvest our planet for resources. They took over our energy domes and attempted to build cities here while we were in hiding. We set off a bomb filled with a special type of gas with the goal of causing the local plant life to overwhelm them. The Tektekians, little did we know, were all hiding safely in our domes though and our race evolved into a plant hybrid species as a result. However, most of the Tektekians did die out afterwards, he continues. Their evolution as a species made them unsuitable for this new environment. I don't get it, Terragon says. 
Why can't we prepare in case something like that happens again? Why do we have to be pacifists? We vowed after our actions wiped out most of our kind that we would never participate in war again. I know, I know, Tarragon says. We started a rebellion and used our new abilities for revenge. Yes, his grandfather continues. And remember, they all died as a result, which is why we let the Sadala Defense Force protect us now. Don't worry, he says. I don't understand why you guys trust them so much, Tarragon says, but his grandfather assures them that they are trustworthy as Tarragon takes his leave. Tarragon, remember, his grandfather says, those guardians fought for revenge. That's why they all paid the price. Fighting for others, that's a noble cause. Hey Tarragon, a young woman says from behind him as he begins to leave. How's the old man Oregano? Sweet of you to visit him. Are you going to see the boys now, she asks. Yeah, we're working double time right now, Tarragon says, as she mentions wanting to hang out later. Anyway, she continues, the boys told me that they have some news for you. Something about a meeting between King Sadala and King Gardenia? Really? Hmm. Thanks for the heads up, Rosemary, he says as he continues his leave. Down at the dock, Bay, Sage, and Time all await Tarragon's arrival. As Tarragon approaches them, Bay tells him that they have some pretty bad news right away. Apparently, he goes on, King Sadala has called every member of the Sadala army from every planet and is bringing a portable base from space here, so we don't get a break tonight. At any rate, he says, we have a lot of work to do. I have a bad feeling about all this, Tarragon says. I hope I don't have to say I told you so. At the Gardenia Kingdom, the king sits at his throne as King Sadala approaches him. These tuffles must really be a huge deal if you feel like you need your entire fleet to take them out, he says to King Sadala. Is it really necessary for us to take down the domes and allow you to establish your base here? It's very necessary, King Sadala says. They are a very big threat indeed. I appreciate you allowing me to contact my forces from here. They are already observing the ionosphere for the Tuffle threat. They have the planet completely surrounded, so no worries. This is when a probe is launched into the planet from outer space, causing a massive earthquake. That's our base, King Sadala says, now with a sinister look on his face. It's currently covering the area of the dome, serving as a replacement. Now that we're alone, however, it's about time, Skirit says, now awakening in tuffle form, being completely possessed. The Gardenians are stunned that they've been had in their very own kingdom as Skirit begins killing them one by one. The tuffle invasion has officially begun, King Sadala says, now being possessed himself. He executes the Gardenian king in cold blood, then beats back to his soldiers, telling them that the Gardenians have revolted against their king and assassinated him and telling them to apprehend them all at once. All of a sudden, the ships surrounding the planet begin to enter the orbit as the Saiyans make their way to the planet's surface. This is when King Sadala and Skirit are giving control of their bodies back, snapping out of the Tuffle possession. Back in the vacuum of space over planet Sadala, Vegeta and Kabe continue their ridiculous battle. I don't want to destroy the universe, Vegeta, Kaba says, that they continue their engagement. If you want to protect the universe with this power, Vegeta says, then you better learn how to control it. I've seen with my own eyes how important this lesson is. If you can match the force and angle of my blows, the shockwaves will cease. And if you can't, Vegeta continues, then you will be responsible for the destruction of this universe in one way or another. This is when, in an instant, Kaba returns to his base form as he asks what happened and why is his power gone all of a sudden even though he still feels a lot stronger? That's because you absorbed the battle power of a Super Saiyan God, Vegeta tells him. Your body adapted to it. One of the perks of being a Saiyan is you have enough energy inside you now that with the right guidance, you can become a Super Saiyan God at any time. Now that you possess the power of a God, Vegeta says, if you can manage to seal that energy into your body so that your opponent can't sense it, you can become a Super Saiyan God. All right, now when you attempt to strike me again, make sure your heightened key is kept within your body, he tells Kaba. Kaba, however, is already extremely exhausted after fighting for hours on end. You better fight like your life depends on it, Vegeta barks at him, and then he charges in to attack. 
Your heightened key is spilling out all over the place, he tells him as they engage. Kaba pleads with him over how ridiculous all of this is and that how he makes it sound so easy, but Vegeta simply tells him then, by all means, die a failure who couldn't control his own power. As the two prepare for one final collision, Kaba puts everything he has into his next attack while also doing his best to heed Vegeta's instructions. As the two collide fist, something astonishing happens as Kabe's hair quickly flickers another color before fading back to normal as he passes out from exhaustion. As he's falling, however, a sparkling aura escapes his body as he falls to the ground below. Vegeta goes to retrieve him, being honestly proud of Kabe's efforts. This boy has more bravery than any Saiyan from Planet Vegeta, he says to himself. My father, the Saiyan race, they were all nothing but a disappointment to me. That's why I wanted to be king, to fix the mistakes of my father who had grown weak and soft. I can't tell them, but these Saiyans of the Sixth, they have what it takes. Kaba, I think even you know deep down that all of this is necessary. Something tells me that these tuffles are going to be a big problem. And just as he says this, as the tuffle invasion begins on planet Gardenia, all of the Saiyans of Universe 6 from the Defense Force, to Kaba of course, to even Kill and Kalifla, are giving it their absolute all during their training in preparation for one of the most significant battles their race will ever have to fight. 